Hello, it's Ben. Uh, yeah, I wanted to make a short video here because I was thinking about uh, a topic that showed up on my wall when I was showing the maps of the, the Twin Ten card and the Marble World Tomb, right? And that was about the size of beds, right? Because on the map, you can uh, you can clearly see with 10, uh, 10 feet uh, to a square. Uh, the the beds are slightly smaller than uh, the squares, as somebody was asking. You know, like are those like hobbit uh, beds and stuff, right? Well, I had to look back at the Welcome Wench and other examples of uh, inns, and I had to uh, to look into the size of beds uh, in order to uh, come up with a, a good approximate, right? But what I really want to talk about is how maps of dungeons and buildings in a, in role-playing games have kind of screwed with our perception of uh, the size of things, right? Because, especially for D&D gamers, right? Because we've grown so used to draw corridors in dungeons as 10 foot wide, sometimes I get the feeling we don't really, you know, grasp how wide 10 feet are. Like a 10 foot wide corridor is extremely large, right? And it used to be that in the AD and D first edition rules, uh, you could have three people standing next to one another uh, in a rank with weapons and able to fight without bothering one another, right? Three people for a 10 foot wide corridor. And that changed later with third edition when uh, the abstraction was reinforced by the fact that uh, uh, figures or uh, characters were standing in five foot, five foot squares, right? So the implication was there was this uh, habitable zone by a character that was five foot wide, five foot on the side. Therefore, suddenly you could only have two characters beside each other in a 10 foot space. And I think that's reinforced that, uh, that, uh, that abstract uh, uh, perception that uh, 10, feet, uh, 10 feet on a map may, may, may be perceived as smaller than it would be really in, re in reality, right? Okay, so to show you something here, I'm going to walk around, right? The inn of the Twin Tank card uh, without the covered areas, just the building itself is about 90 feet wide, which is uh, actually a very big building, right? And that's on purpose, like it's built out of uh, the ruins of a temple, right? And it's meant to be a very large inn in the middle of the wilderness that basically uh, hosts uh, caravans, uh, bands of mercenaries that are coming through. Uh, men at arms and so on, right? So uh, the business is not always super busy in the inn. So you can have moments in a big inn like this where you have a preciously few people. Uh, however, that's supposed to be around uh, the old Imperial Road. Uh, actually, you can place the inn wherever you want on the map by design. But that's the, the basic idea. Okay, so you can see the fence behind me here. Okay, so I made uh, some measurements from those trees there. Okay, I'm going to pan, right? All right, to the opening here, right? We've got about maybe 90 feet of fence, uh, trees, right? That gives you an idea of the, the kind of size we're looking at. This is a very large hole, right? The size of the building of the the twin tank card is kind of comparable to the size of the, the golden hole uh, in the Lord of the Rings movies. Okay, that's, uh, and behind you have this uh, this temple-like uh, semi-circular uh, area that is part of the common room with uh, the, abs the abscess uh, that 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 springs forth, uh, you know. Uh, the, t the twin towers, the twin tank are behind as hang hanging towers uh, above the arcs that, that sustain the, the semi-circular area, right? So it looks kind of uh, uh, Viking and Gothic at the same time, or 
Uh, I, I, the, for the construction that springs for, from the ruins of the temple, I'm imagining, you know, uh, mortar and, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, um, wooden panels at the bottom. And then you got the, the, the logs that are going through the mortar at angles, right? To support the structure and so on. And maybe, uh, some, uh, very thick, uh, black hay for the roof right so you got a very bizarre well not bizarre but a very uh interesting structure in style right that gives this kind of uh, both homey and uh and unique look at the same time right but so all that to say that uh, the perception of uh, dimensions uh i've been skewed over time i think with maps and it's it's interesting to have a look in real life you know what what is 10 feet wide right 10 feet wide that's about okay if you can see here that's about two panels like this right maybe a little less right about this right yeah maybe a panel and a half but there's a camera distortion as well here so that might not be uh, uh but if you were right here next to me yeah, a panel and a half would be about 10 feet. But there's this uh, perception of, uh, of size that is very interestingly skewed with, uh, with a lot of people. That includes me. You know? I have to remind myself what size is what and all that. And sometimes I wonder, am I doing this at the right scale? Right? And I have to, to step back and, uh, and make it work. That's a very interesting topic that. Anyway, if you like, if you have any comments, if you want to, to talk about this, don't hesitate, right? I just thought I, may, I would make a little note of this because uh, as a mapper, as a cartographer, that's something that fascinates me, that uh, representation of reality into the map format and uh, how the map distorts uh, the perception of reality. In any case, bye-bye. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video <laughs> and the scenery as well. <laughs> All right, bye-bye.